Thank you, Nathan. Family and friends, ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here today solely to carry out one of the seven corporal works of mercy. Through our prayers and actions, during these times, we show our respect for life which is always a gift from God and comfort to those who mourn. Permit me to, to remind us all that Psalms 46 verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. The reality is, that there will be very difficult and seemingly unbearable times, but God promises to be our refuge. When we are at our lowest, it's then that God carries us, a pinch from footprints in the sand. The song that God leads his dear children along says, some of us may go through the waters, some through the floods, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrows, but God gives us a song in the right season all day long. My dear friends in Christ, the church is into its 14th week in the ordinary cycle A. And today, we warmly welcome everyone gathered here at the Blessed Sacrament Catholic Church, Grand Anse, St. George, to support our sister Lindra and Peter Robinson, other immediate and extended family and friends, as we bid our final farewell to John T. Josiah Robinson. A special welcome is extended to Yvette Noel Schur and family, Dr. Sheena Alexis, and any other who have crossed the seas to be here with us this morning. We acknowledge the many viewers joining us via the live stream, and we welcome you. At this point, I humbly re request of those who may have forgotten that we are in the house of God. And so I want to remind you that if you have not done so yet, to set your phones on silent or vibrate or preferably turn them off. Thank you. My dear sister Lindra Robinson and family, rest assured that God the Almighty, the Alpha and the Omega, the giver of life, is never asleep, never late, and never blind, and he will come through for you in perfect time. The following tributes are testimony to the fact that although it's a tough time, you can count on us. And so, Without further ado, I now invite Sonaika Maki to render her tribute in song on today's program. Sonaika.
to mention and just bear in mind that we just ponder upon the words whatever is shared we are not in a concert so if we minimize the clapping that would be so much more reverent we move immediately to another tribute by Chloe Baldio and Elisa Ed are Chloe and Elisa here Chloe alone okay sorry Chloe alone Chloe?
Ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, the honor is mine to call now to the AMBO, Mrs. Yvette Noel Scher, to do her tribute. Mrs. Scher. Good morning. Good morning. I wrote my tribute to John T. in the form of a letter. Dearest John T., thank you. Thank you for your bravery, for your confidence, for your unabashed love for others. Thank you for making your love for your family, your friends, for me, so visible. Thank you for turning your pain at every turn into your purpose. Thank you for walking into every room as though God sent you, because he did. In a world that often asks us to step back, slow down, dumb ourselves down, hold on, you lived your truth, a dynamic, kind, gentle, sometimes feisty, shining star. You stepped up, and you were brilliant. A singer, songwriter, model, actor, and often my photographer. You were magical, and I loved you deeply. You stood by your mantra, love all, trust a few, and do harm to none. You were regal from birth because you came from kings. And of course, you came from a queen. Miss Lindra Donna Robinson. You described her to me on several occasions as your queen. Your one constant, your everything. And when I finally met her and hugged her tightly, her beauty and majesty gave me the source of all things beautiful, kind, and peaceful that I loved in you, that I was drawn to the very first time you said hello to me in front of the supermarket not far from here, about seven years ago. The bold young man, unafraid to approach a stranger. Thank you both. I should say thank you to the three of you for bringing this beautiful human into this world and boldly into my heart. I owe you, I owe this family deeply. There were some oohs and ahs when I first met Jaunty. I was taken in by his sculpted cheekbones, the wide set eyes and the perfect nose directly from the ancestors the indigenous Caribs who came, who gave you a look that could set off envious hearts. You were indeed beautiful, but your outer beauty was no match for your gorgeous heart, one that loved easily and deeply, one that was trusting and inviting, one that trained your toothy, often shy smile to take people in and make them feel loved. John T., I felt completely loved, honored, and respected by you. Our God-created relationship defied age and distance. I saw in you the dreamer I was, the dreamer I continue to be. Through every conversation, text, Punjabi dinners, WhatsApp messages, our legendary dance sessions, and the epic beach strolls. 
with your camera always on. I never once wondered why I loved you. I never once wondered why you loved me. My husband, my children, my sisters, my friends, my daughter-in-law and my granddaughter all loved you. And now our hearts are collectively broken. We had a special friendship that was based on all things beautiful. An undeniable pride for being Grenadians. No one could pull out a Grenadian flag for any occasion like us. We called ourselves just country kids from St. Andrews. We believed in all that was possible. And there was our fascination for the arts. Movies, fashion, photography, and the glue that informed and sustained our friendship. Music. You were music, John T. In your purposeful walk and your energetic talk, you were poetry in motion. You were clef and treble notes bouncing on a page of sheet music. Your energy was inspiring. You turned your pain and fears into songs. You painted rainbows before the rainfall and brought light in dark spaces. And with your album, Rebel, you gave the world an in-depth look into your soul, triumph, and heartbreak in equal measure. By being your authentic self, you unknowingly affected so many others here in Grenada and around the world. You literally gave others permission to simply be themselves. John T. Did you know that you were a hero? Did you know that you were Jade's hero? Miss Lindra's hero? All the beautiful people gathered here today, did you know that you were a hero to them? A hero to your siblings, your cousins, your grandparents? So many around the world were touched by your effervescent spirit. So many of them are crushed by your departure. Condolences have come my way for your family from the US, from Italy, Germany, and the Netherlands where I was when I heard the news of your tragic passing. The UK, South Africa, Trinidad, Barbados, Brazil, Hong Kong, Poland, and Valencia, Spain, where my master's candidate students got to know you through your presence in some of my classes via Zoom. The last one, just at the end of April, when you enthusiastically helped me introduce them to Akeem, your support for other artists, like Tammy and Vaughn here in Grenada and around the world was undeniable. What a time we all had celebrating Vaughn at his birthday concert and then our private birthday dinner for him at Silver Sands. Just our little circle, living, loving, dreaming, planning. You the one with the most enthusiastic laughter. What a bright light you were. My heart bled, it's still bleeding. Do you know that you were gone? How could a light like yours ever go dim? The truth is, it cannot. Not even death could take away your light or restrain your energy. For a mighty, powerful God lived in you, loved on you, and guided your every step. Even when you had doubts, you carried on on your mission to be who you were meant to be. You said it yourself in your song, Interstellar, quote, you can't stop my soul from singing. You can't stop me from being great. 
The saddest part about losing you, John T, is the loss of your potential. You were so excited for the future and said so in one of our last WhatsApp messages. You just wanted a beautiful life. I've said it in interviews and I've said it in many discussions before and I still believe it today. Grenada's biggest resource lies with the creative young people who serve as ambassadors with their art. They serve in a capacity that is needed and appreciated here in Grenada and around the world. John T. In preparing to say goodbye to you, one of the hardest things I felt I ever had to do, one of the things I thought about was, I'm just not sure why our worlds collided that eventful day in the parking lot at Real Value. But I know that I thought of you as a bonus son instantly. And I immediately wanted to join your family of protectors who cherished and loved you with every part of their hearts, every single chamber. I knew you were treasured by your blood family from day one. And I wanted to join that team displaying the monstrative love for you. I could not love you anymore if you were of my flesh and of my blood. God created a role for me in your life, and I pray that I played that role well. To sit and laugh with you was powerful. To dance and scream with you was something else. But to simply sit and say nothing, to just sit at the beach and look up in the sky and just marvel at the world, seeing beauty through your eyes was simply transformative for me. After your death, I went searching for why anything that would be comforting. And I came about, I came upon this speech from the great late poet and writer, Dr. Maya Angelou. And it helped me in the early days of anger, shock, and confusion as I tried to come to terms with the fact that the brightest candle I know was extinguished. In part, Dr. Angelou wrote, I am going to talk today about romance, she said. A community without romance risks being brutish and crass, superficial and brittle and even cruel. Without romance, and I don't mean just romance, romance, lovey-dovey romance, I mean agape romance, the kind between communities, brothers and sisters, cousins and friends, family. I mean the romance that allows you to soften our voices when we see each other, to say, hey honey, how are you? How are you doing? And of course, in your case, John T, it would be Hi, love. And here is where the speech reminded me so much of you, Jaunty. She continued, quote, So I like to hear people laugh. I love it. I love to laugh. I pray every day that I would laugh at least as much as I cry. What I would do right now to hear you laugh again. John T, my beautiful John T. Lindra's John T, 
Peter's jaunty. Andy's jaunty. Jade's jaunty. Tammy's jaunty. You're jaunty. I pray that everyone here today and around the world choose to live in joy as you did, Jaunty. It would be the most radical thing you can do to live in joy. Through clouds, you saw the sunshine and you commanded the rainbows. There was one over the plain when we landed last night. I pray that one day soon, all of us here will only see rainbows and hear laughter and dance wildly in abandon, pelt your waist when we think of Jaunty. I'll never forget you, dearest Jaunty. Your legacy of love will continue, my friend, my bonus son. The sun will shine again after the rain. I shall look for you on every cloud. I will listen for your voice in every song. And I know that I'll find you amid every rainbow in the sky, through every butterfly and even through flies. Because you are now the angel that we all know by name. Friendship is not about who you spend the most time with. It's about who you had the best time with. And Jaunty, I had the best time with you. Thank you. You made coming to Grenada so special. I want to, I want to read this very briefly to you. It's a Nigerian oriki. A boastful poem, if you will, written by best-selling author Lovey Ajayi Jones. She met Jaunty in 2021 and loved him. She came here for my birthday celebration. And Jaunty was not just a friend at the birthday party. He was part of the production team, and he was so proud of that. He was a production assistant, personal assistant, protector, and logistics coordinator all in one. Lovey writes, audacious artists of authenticity, bold bearer of bliss, victor of vitality and vulnerability, luminary of light, eminence of excellence, duke of dance, fiercely faithful friend. Jaunty, the jovial. And finally, in Jaunty's very own words from the album opener, he sang in parts. I've got no regrets. Loving you was the best. I am sorry that I left. Please enjoy the songs I wrote. We love you, Jaunty. I love you forever and a day. I pray that you rest in love, joy, and everlasting peace. Thank you so much. Miss Pilgrim and Miss Placid, just a few brief words now. Pilgrim and Placid, can you tell? We'll do Miss Pilgrim first, and then we'll take you. A few brief words. And Yuli, get ready to do your part. Good morning, everyone. My name is Karen Pilgrim, and I'm not going to be long. But um, when I arrived at this island, Jaunty saw me, the hair, the glasses, and he said, I don't know who you are, but I need to know you. And I said, what a welcome to Grenada. 
And I just want to let parents, I want to let his mother know you have raised a king, a beautiful king, an ambassador to Grenada. He had nothing ill will to say of Grenada. All he talked about was Grenada, Grenada. Miss Karen, you have to come back. You have to come back. And I want you to know, parents, please pour into your kids. This was a talented young man. And everybody that's here, he's made an impact on. He walks into rooms and lifts it up with his smile. You want to know who he is. He didn't need to know me. I needed to know who he was. And I just want all of you to know, <laughs> John Tate said, when I told him I'm going back to America because it's slow. And he said, things will fasten up. Just be patient. Don't let one mango ruin it for you. So I tell you all, celebrate him. I don't want to cry because he smiled. But I just want to do one thing before I have a seat. There's so much to say about Jante, but we're going to celebrate him. We're going to pour into his mother, pour into his brother, hug on his family, love on each other, be the Grenadians that he wants you to be and showcase all over the world. When Yvette told me what happened, I was in Brooklyn, and there was already candles and a celebration for him. He is international in his own way. I need everybody right now. I'm going to say Grenada. You're going to say Jante. And I'm going to say it three times, and I want him to hear it. I want his mother to feel the love. Are you ready? Grenada. Jante. Grenada. Jante. Grenada. Jante. And that's how we celebrate life. I can't imagine someone who gets me to get on a plane within 24 hours to be here for a funeral. But I'm traveling from Sinusha, and I met John T. a few years ago um, through the conversation with Grand Chap. And this is a young man that they said, look out for. And so this morning, the only thing I could have thought of, although I had this entire thing written out, thinking about how do we celebrate his life, thinking about what he stood for, the diversity that he represented, the equality that he always stood out for, he spoke for. And I think when we think about him, we think about a bottle of joy, really and truly. Someone who by no measure deemed who he was because people didn't understand. Someone who stood out and spoke out and even defended others even if many times people did not defend him. And so this morning, it's really heartening to see so many people here and to hear so many people pour out love. And even, you know, just coming out, just being here, speak words. And so as we go forward, we know there is one thing that is real. When Pope Francis says, God loves all his children, we know that we are all made in his likeness and his, his image. And therefore, today, although we send our dearly beloved a few feet below the ground, today we celebrate him more than any other day. Today we live. Today he continues to live in each one of us as he impacts each one of us enough to be here. And as we go forward, I say, love each other. Hate only kills us. Love each other. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Placid Yuli. Thank you. Good morning, Linda, family and friends, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we gather here to remember and celebrate the life of a remarkable individual, Josia Jonti Robinson. Born on December 12, 1998, Jonti's journey in this world began with resilience and strength. Despite being born prematurely, he fought bravely, spending three months in hospital before coming home to his loving family. From the very beginning, Jonti demonstrated a fighting spirit that would shape his life in remarkable ways. 
Jonti's educational journey took him through various institutions, <clears throat> starting from Bright Star Preschool, Beacon Primary School, Rainbow Junior Academy, and finally, Presentations Brothers College. It was during this time at PBC that Jonti truly blossomed. His immense <clears throat> He immensed himself in numerous activities, such as being a member of the <coughs> choir and debating team, as well excelled as an athlete. <coughs> Jonti's dedication and passion were evident in everything he pursued. One of Jonti's greatest talents lay in storytelling and writing. His passion became his driving force behind his career as he embarked on a journey to become a songwriter. John T. poured his heart and soul into the music, resulting in the creation of a remarkable album called Rebel. His love for the stage, singing and performing grew stronger with each passing day. And he became a beacon of inspiration for aspiring Grenadian artists. From the tender age of 10, John Dee started to craft beautiful songs, showcasing his creative brilliance. His talents were not confined to music alone, as he ventured into modeling and acting during his visits to Barbados. John Dee's charismatic presence and natural ability allowed him to shine brightly, and these endeavors leaving the lasting impression on those he encountered. But beyond his talent and achievement, it was John T's character that truly endured him to others. He possessed a rare, genuine warmth that re radiated from his welcoming smile. John T was always courageous and unapologetically himself, never waving in his beliefs for compromising his integrity. His sense of style and elegance were mirrored in his appearance, and he carried himself with grace and class. John T's love for people was boundless. He cherished his family and friend, shared a special bond with his brother Jade. John T's determination to see his brother smile knew no bonds, and he went above and beyond to bring to his siblings life. Above all, John T. held a deep and unconditional love to his mother, Lindra, which he expressed after every phone call, regardless of the nature of the conversation. I love you, mommy, were words that echoed from his heart, a testament to the profound love he held for his family. Kind-hearted and compassionate John T. possessed an unwavering dedication to help others. His legacy of caring for people will forever live on, serving as a reminder of the impact one person can have on the lives of many. John T.'s spirit, his zest of life, and his unwearying authenticity will continue to inspire those who have the privilege of knowing him. As we bid farewell to our dear John T. today, let us remember the incredible individual he was. Let us celebrate, celebrate his accomplishments, his love, and his unwavering spirit. Though he may not no longer be with us physically, his legacy will endure, woven into the fabric of the memories and hearts. John T. Josiah Robinson, you have touched our lives in profound ways and we're forever grateful for the time we had with you. May your soul find eternal peace and may our light continue to shine upon us all. On a personal note, as his godfather, it has been an absolute honor and privilege to watch, to grow, to watch him grow into the incredible, incredible individual he became. From the moment I was entrusted with the role by Lindra, I knew that I had given a precious gift, that I have been given a precious gift. 
I'm grateful for the lessons he taught me about resilience, love, and the power of embracing every moment. I wanted to emphasize that my role as his godfather extends beyond the physical presence. I promise to be a pillar of strength for his family and to honor his memory in all that I do. Rest in peace, dear John T. Could the driver of PB3 go to your vehicle immediately? PB3. We now call Lisa Alexis to speak on behalf of the family. Lisa Alexis. Good morning to everyone. In everything, we must give thanks. Even in the chaos of everyday life, moments of gratitude remind us to hold on to the good things we still have. On behalf of the Robinson family, I stand here to express gratitude for the love and support shown during the difficult time as a result of Jaunty's passing. First, we say thank you to God for his grace and mercies for affording us the breath of life and the opportunity to be here. To the membership of the Blessed Sacrament Church, we thank you for affording us the opportunity to use this facility to celebrate the life of our loved one, Jaunty. To the Plywood Restaurant and Bar, Yuzakura Sushi Bar and Restaurant, and Cherry's Kitchen, in particular, Eileen and Jeffrey, thank you. Bernard Hurst, Tornado Pride, Grenchap, and the many others who reached out and made financial contributions, we say an enormous thank you. It went a long way. To Ms. Yvette, Ms. Yvette Noel Scher, Uli, and others who rendered songs and special words, we thank you for your heartwarming tributes. The passion in which you delivered is testimony to show that John T., though young, he lived a meaningful life. He brought joy and touched the lives of many and was loved in return. Thank you for the memories. A special thank you is expressed to Ms. Betty and Lazarus, Sarah, Tony, Uli, and Kathy. These individuals have been with Lynn, John T.'s mom, every day since his passing. They played a pivotal role in the planning and organization of the candlelight vigil and today's proceedings. Your support will forever be remembered. To do, those who took the time to travel from overseas or took the time off from other engagements to be with us here this morning to celebrate Jaunty, we say thank you. Even to those who couldn't be here with us in the physical, but are here in spirit, you would have called, text, offered words of encouragement, prayers, we say thank you. To everyone else who gave the support in one way or the other, on behalf of the Robinson family, thank you. You are appreciated. And thank you, Lisa. We now move into the final, or formal, sending off for John T. And if you have not done so yet, we invite you to put your phones on silent or vibrate or take them off. Thank you. Today, our reading is taken from the letter of Paul to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 31 to 35 and 38 to 39. This reading will be proclaimed by Sister Betty and Lazarus. We now invite the family, the immediate family, to the entrance for one final moment, for the final viewing in preparation for the reception of the body. So the family, we ask you to go now.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the waters of baptism, our brother John died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. My brothers and sisters, we have come together to renew our trust in Christ, who by dying on the cross has freed us from eternal death, and by rising has opened for us the gates of heaven. We want to pray for our brother Jonti, that he may share in Christ's victory, but also we want to pray for ourselves that the Lord may grant us the gift of his loving consolation. I would like to welcome all of you to the Blessed Sacrament Church, to this funeral service. I would like to welcome the immediate family of our brother John T., the extended family, all of friends that he had, but also all of you who have decided to come here because you saw the need for being him, here for him, for the family, in support that should be always given in the moment of grief, in the moment of pain. Our hearts are full of pain, full of grief, because we, as a people in general, we have this understanding that the life of no one should be cut off at any, any point. Although our hearts are in pain, in grief, we believe that Almighty God, through his spirit, is able to, to console us, to give us the strength to go through this difficult moment, to give us the strength to heal. Today we want to pray for our brother Jonti, but also we want to pray for ourselves, for the strength to heal. It may take time, it may take a long time, but we should always have this hope that the healing is possible. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith that your Son who died on the cross was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery, your servant John T., who has gone to his rest in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Let us listen to the word of God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. With God on our side, who can be against us? Since God did not spare his own son, but gave him up to benefit us all, we may be certain after such a gift that he will not refuse anything he can give. 
Could anyone accuse those that God has chosen? When God acquits, could anyone condemn? Could Christ Jesus? No. He not only died for us, he rose from the dead. And there at God's right hand, he stands and pleads for us. Nothing, therefore, can come between us and the love of Christ. Even if we are troubled or worried or being persecuted or lacking food or clothes or being threatened or even attacked, those are the trials through which we triumph by the power of him who loved us. For I am certain of this, neither death nor life, no angel, no prince, nothing that exists, nothing still to come, not any power or height or depth, not any created thing can ever come between us and the love of God made visible in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord.
the kingdom of God is close at hand. Repent and believe the good news. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus instructed the twelve as follows. As you go, proclaim that the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out devils. You received without charge, give without charge. Provide yourselves with no gold or silver, not even with a few coppers for your purses, with not harvest sack for the journey, or spare tunic or footwear, or a staff for the workman deserve or the staff for the workman deserves his keep. Whatever town or village you go into, Ask for someone trustworthy and stay with him until you leave. As you enter his house, salute it, and if the house deserves it, let your peace descend upon it. If it does not, let your peace come back to you. And if anyone does not welcome you or listen to what you have to say as you walk out of the house or town, Shake the dust from your feet. I tell you solemnly, on the day of judgment, it will not go as hard with the land of Sodom and Gomorrah as with that town. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Jesus said to his disciples, to the twelve, Go, proclaim that the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. Go, proclaim the, the good news. The news that you can touch God. The news that God is there with you all the time when you are just making this journey through life. In Poland, where I am from, every year, for the last 20-something years, during the summertime, there is a huge music festival. Hundreds of thousands of young people are coming just to enjoy themselves, just to be immersed in that, that music that is being played there. At that festival, at some point, the church saw the need to be present as well. Just to give this testimony to the people who are coming there that God is real. It happened that I was a part of that a few times. And it was amazing to see a lot of young people, hundreds of thousands, who are just having a good time. However, among those people who were having a good time, there was always a group of the people who were just always searching for something, looking for something, trying to go deeper in the understanding of life than just the ordinary daily, daily life. Seeing the cross that was there, quite often they were just approaching us and we had a good conversation with them, a beautiful conversation with, with, with them. And don't get me wrong, I am not the person that is imposing the faith of, on anyone. 
I'm always saying that God has his time, God has his ways. However, it is always good to be there for someone, even for the simple conversation. And I remember that during those meetings with those people, one person later on gave the testimony. That person who came to that festival uh, without really a reason. The person was searching, looking. The, pace, the person was heard by many, many things that had happened in uh, his life. And the person had the conversation with one of the people was there testifying about God, bringing witness about the mercy and the love of God. And as this person was saying, it was, it was a good time, but what really struck this person at the end was that he was offered a hug. And like he was giving this testimony at that moment, when he felt this hug, for the first time in his life, he felt that he received something from someone who didn't want anything back from him. And that was the changing moment in his life. I strongly believe that at this point, this moment, it was God who touched the heart of this person and allowed him to feel his presence, his goodness, his love. One of my favorite stories that I like to contemplate in the Bible it's the story where God is calling Moses to take his people out of Egypt. And what is really interesting is that they have a long journey, 40 years long journey. However, through the whole journey, they know that God is present that God is with them, that God journey with them. How do they know that? The scripture is very, very clear. When Moses is having these encounters with God, after those encounters, his face is shining. There is also this cloud that is bringing the presence of God through the journey, giving them the direction where to go and, and where to turn their footsteps. And this story about Moses and his face shining, and through that assuring his people that God is there for us, is always forcing me to ask myself a question. It should also force all of us to ask ourselves this question. Is God present in my life? And if yes, how can, how can I recognize his presence in my life? We, as a Christians, we should be the people who will be like Moses, having these faces that are shining so other people can easily say, God is present in my life, in my journey. I can clearly see that. The problem with the church, because the church has some problems, and one of the problems with the church, which is with all of us who are the members of the church, don't think about the church only as an institution. The problem with the church sometimes is that 
our faces are not shining, so when others look at us, they are not sure if there is God there. The whole point of being a Christian is to live close to God, to have this encounter with him every day so others, those who will be looking at us, will be able to experience the closeness of God. And don't get me wrong, having these encounters with God doesn't mean that we will not make mistakes in our journey through life. We are human beings. We are not perfect. Christians are not perfect. The church is not perfect. However, we should see the need for perfection, for holiness, for life that will follow God's plan for us. Because deeply in our hearts we know that only through this kind of life, the life when we will be searching for our God, when we will try to live in his presence, we will be able to find this true happiness and experience this genuine love, this unconditional love that no human being really can give us. It was like with this hug at this music festival. The hug came from the person, but it was really God, Lord God who was able to touch the heart of that person. So as we are just saying about us Christians, about us church, we should always have this desire for holiness, for perfect life. We should always have this understanding that I can find this only when I am close to him when I am walking with him, when my way and his way is the same way. And sometimes we have the tendency to not to see this that way. We want to have the way that we think is perfect for us. And we think that God will not journey with us when we will tell him that we have this plan for our life. And that is the big mistake that we all are making. Because God will never leave us alone. God will always try to accommodate us in his plan and he always will try to walk with us no matter what we will tell him, he will patiently will walk with us. He will be proving that we can touch him. He will be giving us this experience of his goodness and peace. Our way can always be united with the way of God. We, people, can always walk together with our God. Our God is not the one that is condemning us, that is telling us, well, look at you. I don't think that this, where you want to go, is really you know, something that will bring you happiness. But I will walk with you. I will walk with you and I will give you this understanding that will allow you to grow. To have the face 
that is always shining, allowing the people to see the goodness of the Lord. This is what we Christians, this is what we church should always keep in mind. And we have to work on that. Again, we can do that. It is not easy, and apparently the truth is that many people who lost the connection with the church, with God, want to focus only on the mistakes that we Christians, the church, are making, which is not really the right approach. Be genuine, be honest. You do not want others to focus on the mistakes that you are making in your life Why you do not, do not want to focus on the good things that Christianity is bringing into the lives of so many. You will ask me what this really is that Christianity is bringing into the lives of so many people. And I will give you the answer right away. Hope. Hope. Hope that we can have life and we can have life in abundance. Hope that the evil will not prevail over good. Hope that the death is not the end of our existence. Hope that the true, genuine love is possible. Jesus came to this world to bring good news to the people so they can believe and they can be saved. Jesus brought hope to this world. And it was not just the words that he was giving to us. By the sacrifice of his life, by his death, he proved that his words are trustworthy. What my God did for me, he died so I can live. My God died for me. And that is very, very important to notice. So I want to tell all of you today, do not be afraid to seek God. Do not be afraid to seek his presence. Do not be afraid to believe. My brothers and sisters, my friends, today we gathered here to say goodbye to our brother Jonte. His life ended up so unexpectedly and so unjustly, and we have to be very, very vocal about that. As on every funeral, so today, we do pray for mercy for him. We all know that we are not perfect, we all are making the mistakes. We want to pray that God will forgive the mistakes that he made during his journey through life. But also we do hope at the same time that God will reward him for the good that he has done in his life for the good that has been offered through his hands to so, so many people. Because as you said in the tributes, so many people loved him. It means that they experienced from him a lot of love and a lot of good things. And we believe that for that he will be rewarded through his baptism, 
because he was baptized, he was confirmed in the Catholic Church. Through his baptism, he entered into a unique relationship with God. The relationship that never can be erased. How this relationship is unfolding over the years is always very intimate secret that we share with our God. But we want to believe that this relationship with God was growing. And we want to believe that this relationship that started at the baptism, at his baptism, will continue in the heavenly kingdom. I would like to tr express my deepest sympathy, my condolences to mom, to the whole family, to all of you who are deeply hurt by what had happened. I gave you this example of this hack from this music festival for a reason. Remember that even in the midst of distress, in the midst of the pain, grief that we are going through, God is not leaving us alone and he wants to hug us, he wants to give us this understanding that we are going through this difficult time not alone but with him. May this will be our consolation for today. May the process of healing start, may the process of healing continue. Remember Jesus brought hope to this world. Let us look and seek for this hope that has been offered to us through him. Amen. Please stand up. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. In baptism, our brother John T. received the light of Christ, scattered the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy. Our brother was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. Lord, in your mercy. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. Lord, in your mercy. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy. The family and friends of John T. seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. Lord, in your mercy. 
We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother, strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And now, with longing for the coming of God's kingdom, let us offer our prayer to the Father, the prayer that Jesus has taught us himself. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thus also ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, our mother, the best mother that we can have, for her intercession on our behalf, as we are saying, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Please be seated. Now we'll have the collection hymn, and the collection, collection hymn will be followed immediately by the meditation hymn. As it has been announced, the collection usually is taken for the maintenance of our cemetery. Today, we are accommodating the request of the family, and the collection will be divided and will go also to the school for the special need, the school that our brother John T. was close to.
My brothers and sisters, trusting in God, we have prayed together for our brother Jointi. And now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see our brother again and enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Saints of God, come to his aid, hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Prayer of Commendation. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother jointly in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham. And where Lazarus is poor no longer, may you find eternal rest. Whoever believes in me, even though that person dies, shall live. I am the resurrection and the life. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now in peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest.
If you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain There's a place for people like you if you stand up for those down on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light Give sight to the ones who've lost their way There's a place for people like you I've heard there the streets are made of gold And when you get there, there's a hand to hold I believe when you days down here through There's a place up there for people like you Our brother John T. has gone to his rest in the peace of Christ. May the Lord now welcome him to the table of God's children in heaven. With faith and hope in eternal life, let us assist him with our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord also for ourselves.
May we who mourn be reunited one day with our brother. Together may we meet Christ Jesus when he who is our life appears in glory. We read in the sacred scripture, This is the will of the one who sent me, says the Lord, that I should not lose anything of what he gave me, but that I should raise it on the last day. Prayer over the place of committal. Lord Jesus Christ, you, by your own three days in the tomb, you hallowed the graves of all who believe in you and so made the grave a sign of hope that promises resurrection, even as it claims our mortal bodies. Grant that our brother may sleep here in peace until you awaken him to glory, for you are the resurrection and the life. Then he will see you face to face, and in your light will see light, and know the splendor of God, for you live and reign forever and ever. Because God has chosen to call our brother John T. from this life to himself, we commit his body to its resting place, for we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. that the Lord may embrace him in peace and raise up his body on the last day. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God of holiness and power, accept our prayers on behalf of your servant John T. Do not count his deeds against him, for in his heart he desired to do your will. As his faith united him to your people on earth, so may your mercy join him to the, the angels in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. May he rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed 
through the mercy of God, rest in peace. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
dancing, them see the performance. No people see me life and war one. But them no know say more time it look damn on. And them no see say I'm a belly, me a crawl fan. Mama just got me with tears in her eyes. She never know me have a stage show tonight. Not even she see the fears in my eyes. But me just a go and put on the show. Cause they don't know, yeah. Thank you. 